I'm George Hadley with Mbit Wonder, and on today's show, we're going to be building the control electronics for my RGB lightsaber project. For those of you unfamiliar with the project, RGB Saber is a programmable Luxion LED driver designed to modulate the light output from an LED. In this way, the LED, and thus the lightsaber blade, can be adjusted to any color in the RGB color spectrum. The project is open source, so you can download the latest hardware and software files from our website at nbitwonder.com. I have the latest PCB for the project, so let's get started, let's start building. We begin with the microcontroller, a PIC 18F2221 from Microchip. This version of the board uses an SSOP package, so the micro can be hand soldered by bridging groups of pins together and then applying desoldering braid to remove excess solder. When you think you're done, visually inspect your work just to make sure there aren't any bridges. And then, attempt to connect to the microcontroller with your microcontroller programmer to verify that it is working correctly. Once the microcontroller has been added to the board, and we have verified that it works by connecting to it with our programmer, it's time to solder on the other SMD components. This design uses 1206 resistors, 805 capacitors, and some SOT223 transistors. If you shy away from surface mount components, don't! All you need is patience and a pair of SMD tweezers, and you'll be fine. To finish off the main board, we add the DC-DC converter, bulk capacitor, and male header. Because of the layout of this design, the converter is inserted into the board and then folded down over the board so as to lay flat on top of the board. To prevent unintentional shorts, consider covering the SMD resistors beneath the DC-DC converter with some electrical tape or other method. With the control board completed, it's time to construct the peripheral board. To start, we solder on the pin header, making sure to solder this on the back of the board. Trim the leads on the top of the board as close to the board as possible. Now, place the sliding potentiometer on the top of the board, protecting the pin that header leads from short circuit. Visually inspect to verify that the pin header isn't contacting the potentiometer, then solder on the potentiometer. Finally, finish off the board by soldering on the RGB LED and tactile switch. So the two boards are complete. Now, the only part left in our little project is assembling the cables. So, I went on DigiKey and I got uh, ribbon cable. This is 28 gauge, 16 conductor ribbon cable. You can get it for, I don't know, it's like 10 bucks or 25 feet or something. It's pretty cheap. Um, and I'm using these, these MTA 100 connectors. They, uh, Tyco Electronics makes them. I'm sure that other companies do as well. But uh, the main reason I chose those is because the crimping tool is really cheap. Uh, it's still probably a lot for what you're getting, but a lot of these crimping tools run you hundreds or thousands of dollars. But I found this for $17.56, so I decided to go with the Tyco MTA100 connectors. So we have successfully built and connected um, the two boards together using the peripheral connector cable, which we just finished building. Um, so here's a better view of that. Mm -hmm. Simple ribbon cable with crimped connectors at both ends. Yes. So that. Uh, I sort of goofed up. I, I had meant to uh, reverse the uh, direction on one end, but oh well. Oh well, it'll be okay though. Anyhow, so uh, we, got, we have our two boards connected together nice and reliably. So the next step, we now have to do the LED and the battery connections. So now, 
we can connect the LED to the system that we have been working on. So that's, that's good and connected. The last step in our electronics build is the power systems. So I went ahead and went to Battery Junction. They have this great lithium ion battery pack that I bought there and uh, an associated lithium ion charger to use with that. And then I uh, went over to Radio Shack and I got this uh, double pole single throw power switch and a uh, little 2.1 millimeter jack. indicator light turns on. We have our color selection working. So now we'll kill the lights and uh, you'll get to see the lightsaber blade. I can dial up the intensity of the given colors. And I can create composite colors. Do mace window purple, among others. Just about any color you can think of.